God. I'm Pastor Frank Church. I pass the Family Worship Center here in Rocky Ford, Colorado. We welcome our viewers through uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, be sure you like us and you share this uh, video with everybody else. Uh, we're, we're live, and so we just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Father. And I give you praise, and I give you glory, and I give you honor, Father God, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Not only do we pray for the people that come to this church, but the people who watch us out there on Facebook and YouTube, Father God. Bless them, Lord, Father God, for being obedient, Father God, and good servants to you, Father God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Yes. And everybody said what? Amen.
And you know why? Because of all the turmoil and everything that's around this country, what's happening to us, uh, the COVID-19, the, uh, the economy, people not working, people losing their jobs. You know what? My Bible says that my God supplies all of your needs according to the Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and the Bible says, let the weak say, strong. strong. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. It's impossible. Please God with God. Faith. Amen. What moves God? Faith. Faith. His word is spoken. It's anointed. Right. Yes. And I thank you, Father God. We pray for all of you out there. Uh, we just... Uh, Keep lifting you up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to you inside. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Forget about what's <clears throat> out there. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying it's not <clears throat> out there. You may be sick. You, may, you, know, you might be in a financial rut right now. But I tell you right now, when God says, if you believe it and you receive it, it's yours. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank God for the people that came to church. Yes. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> If the word is spoken, we will always leave our doors open. And uh, praise God. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I thank God for that. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say what? Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise God. Good morning, church. It's good to have everybody here. And you know, in the middle of a storm, and kind of in a way we are in the middle of a storm, if you can look at it that way. But you know what? The Bible says to give God the glory and sing hallelujah. And you know what hallelujah means? God must be praised. So thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Well, um, our Sunday school is at 9 a.m. And we were here this morning. This, You know, I told Pastor last night, shall we cancel church? But you know what? We've had bigger storms than this, and we were here. So, oh well, we're here. So thank you, God. I just thank you for everything. When he speaks to you, when he shows you, he's so near you all the time if you allow him to. Amen. Our Sunday school, we're, reading a, we're studying from a book by Andy Womack. And if you want to learn something, come to Sunday school. Oh, my Lord, it's so good. You learn about the spirit of slap. And I'm not going to tell you what that is. You've got to come to Sunday school. Find that one out. Our service is at 10 a.m. Of course, you know that. Our Bible study is at 6 p.m. On Tuesday, we had such good Bible studies. Oh, my goodness. I can't say enough about the Word of God. The Word of God is what's going to get you through. It's going to get you through anything you're facing. Amen. Like Pastor says, I'm not moved by what I see what I hear or what I feel. I'm only moved by what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says you're more than a conqueror. The Word of God says you're an overcomer. Amen. The Word of God says you're above and not beneath. Amen. The Word of God says you're the head and not the tail. Amen. So why are we defeated Christians? Amen. The devil should be under our feet and guess what? We're under his. He's got us like a little puppet. Moving us around all over the place. We're afraid here. We're afraid here. We're concerned here. We're fretful over here. We don't need to be. Because we are children of a living God. We're children of the most high God. And like Jeannie and Dennis in Jungles of Panama said that. <clears throat> when they were dealing with the witch doctors, she said that the witch doctor came up to her and said he could see child of the most high God written across her forehead right here. That is totally awesome. I'm telling you what, people, if, we, if the church will stand up and take their rightful position as God-fearing people, we'll conquer all this stuff. We will. We will. Our prayer on Wednesday, we have good prayer, people. We pray for our nation. We pray for our president. <clears throat> Excuse me. We pray for all of you. We pray for our surrounding communities. We pray for our schools. We just pray whatever God leads us to pray about. But you know what? Prayer is good. And so if you'd like to come, we're here at 6 p.m. on Wednesday for 40, 45 minutes. The ladies meet at 11 o'clock, and they want to tell you thank you for all the orders that they had. They made close to $300. <clears throat> and they were really good. 
So thank you, God, for that. Our communion and mission Sunday is the first Sunday of every month we have communion. I know some people do it every week, every other week. We, we choose to do it once a month. And like I told you all before, it's a holy thing before God. It's holy. It's symbolic. It's all symbolic. <clears throat> Our fellowship dinner has been canceled until January. You all know that. <clears throat> because there's so much food flying around. So um, we're just going to cancel till till January. Our men and women's meeting has been totally tremendous. It's been really good. I don't know about the men. Yeah. But they, they cook and have breakfast and then they leave us their leftovers and boy, do we eat good. <laughs> We, we eat really good. <clears throat> so thank God for that. Um, we will have a Christmas party. Yay! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. And we have someone that said, we are having a Christmas yes. party. Yes. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> I'm not going to say who. I won't tell who. But she said, right. we're yes. having a Christmas party. So... We will have a Christmas party. It's a $10 gift exchange and bring finger food or no, not, not finger food, spoon and fork food. Yeah. Yeah. And it is the 19th of December. It's on a Saturday. It's at 6 p.m. And I don't know what we'll play. I'll, I'll depend on Richard for that. I don't know what he has in store. But we, we play some good games with our little gifts and we have a lot of fun. So. Mark your calendars for the 19th of December at 6 p.m. for our Christmas party. Invite people that... Yeah. They don't have to come to our church. Invite them. Oh, yes. <clears throat> he has people. But that's, that's the gist of our announcements today, I think. that uh, Operation Christmas Child, anything new, Lynn? We did... How many? 4,000. 4,916 boxes, and our church packed 701, 721 boxes from our church. And on top of that, you all do the math, $9 a box to ship them. We brought the money in. The money came in. God showed himself strong. All the money came in to ship our money in for our boxes, so... And thank you all, because we couldn't do it without you. It takes, you know, the people say there many hands make light work. And it takes us all to do it. We, like Pastor has said numerous times, we can't do it by ourselves. We need you all. And just like it was in the, book, in the Old Testament, when Moses was leading the people, he had Aaron and her on the other side holding his arms up. They were holding his arms up. So that's what we need. Our daily reading, in our church, we read a, a chapter a day. And don't limit it to a chapter a day. Read your Bible. That's where the strength is at. Uh, I, heard, uh, I had a, a lady call me this week, and she said, thank God for the teaching I've had. Thank God for the teaching that I've had. Because her mother was ill. And she said, I begin to fear and she knew how to pray. Yes. She was strong in her faith. And guess what? Her mother's doing well. Praise God. <clears throat> her mother's doing yes. well. Yes. So see, we've got to have that, that foundational teaching. Yes. Yes. You've got to, you, it doesn't matter what we're facing, we've got to stand strong, especially in these days. In these days now, because there are turbulent times out there. I mean, it's, it's chaotic. But we've got the greater one inside us. We've got risen from the dead power inside of us. Amen. So read your chapter a day, and don't forget to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, because we need it every day. Because we're, we're in a world, and we're among people, and they sometimes they rub you the wrong way, and, and you get into these little feelings, and you just got to be, you know, you don't know what other people are going through. Maybe they're going through things that you don't know, and, and that's why they did what they did or said what they said. Just forgive. Yeah. Be of a mind to forgive people. Yeah. Because when you forgive others, God can forgive you. Yeah, right. And we sin all the time, and we come short of the glory of God. That's what we read in Sunday school this morning. So <clears throat> it, 
if anyone else has, has a announcement, that's all I have. church we do this every year and if you've been coming to this church uh, anytime you, you find out that in December uh, we like to help uh, uh, people that uh, right now they might, they might or may not be in a financial situation or whatever yes uh, I told Stella this year uh, I, in fact I would always tell her it seems like we always try to bless people that are kind of low you know Little finances or whatever the case may be. But then I, I asked her this. I said, Stella, why don't we bless somebody who has 14 cars and 14 houses? How come we can't bless them? You see how sometimes our mind has to be renewed? Amen? So Kenneth Copeland lives in a $5 million house. So what? He still needs $5 million a month to, to uh, to run his program a month. That, that's what it costs to run that uh, that ministry. And so I said, uh, it, it was just a thought. I, I, I just told him, I said, you know, there's people out there that, you know, they're pretty well off, well taken care of and everything. How come we can't bless them? Okay? And, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then Stella mentioned something to me about, uh, well, there, there's some people that could use just maybe a couple of hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever, just, just to get them over. Uh, until uh, uh, the crisis is over, but uh, just to help them get over the hill, so Amen. to speak. Amen. And so uh, that's why I didn't want to take your tithe right now. I'll take it at the end of the service. Yes. So uh, keep it in your heart uh, to give an, an additional uh, whatever you want to give mm -hmm. and uh, designate it as, a, as an offering uh, to help some other people. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes during Thanksgiving, this church has given people uh, turkeys, hands, uh, we've helped out people. That's why we're a blessed church. You see how the principle works. It's a spiritual. It's a. It's a. Gene, it's a uh, spiritual principle. Yes, it is. And if all you're doing is receiving, if all you do now listen to me very closely. If if all you do is receive, there's something wrong. Because that that wheel of sowing and reaping all of a sudden stops. So when you get blessed with finances, you do what to keep the uh, wheel rolling, so yes. to speak. You got to give, and if you don't tithe and you don't give, maybe that's why you're in the situation you're in. Amen. Yeah. There was a time where, uh, uh, in my first marriage, uh, I, I didn't tithe. I kept the money all to myself. You know, I did what I wanted to do, and you know. But I tell you what, uh, teachers got paid once a month, and by the end of two weeks, I tell you what, I was flat broke. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You, you get the money and uh, you see all these $100 bills and everything, and then you go, well, it's time to go eat out. It's, it's nice to just go to Denver stay at a nice hotel, a little five-star hotel, and pay two, three hundred dollars or whatever. And then two weeks later, uh, <coughs> you have to charge the food. You have to, well, I'll double up next time on the cable, I'll double up next time on the, uh, on the bills and utilities. And, uh, and it only works when you give. My Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. So the finances will come in, and uh, you want to help us out, uh, we're going to be able to, <clears throat> to help uh, uh, other people. And uh, you know that song that uh, Alan sang, where it says, uh, to believe and to receive, yes. and then to give a testimony uh -huh. and testify? The only way you're going to testify is to give and to believe and to receive what God has given you and bless someone else and then you can, you can testify that because when you give to someone else, guess what God's going to do? He's going to give you finances. He's going to give you your needs. Your needs are going to be met and you're going to say what? Thank you, Father God. Now, if you don't receive anything from the Lord, it's not God's fault, so don't blame Him. 
The fault is you. Because you want to hoard it all. Don't be like that young rich ruler. All, all the young rich ruler wanted to do was build more barns and fill them up with the crops or whatever he was uh, planning. And uh, you can't, you can do it, go ahead and do it, but the, the spiritual law of God of, of, uh, of sowing and reaping, it's not going to work for you. Amen? Yes. Praise God. God's a good God. Awesome. Amen? Yes. This church, we're blessed. Yes. 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 We're not in debt. Amen. Amen? Okay. I've been debating about this sermon today. Because it's going to it's going to touch a lot of people. With, uh, sometimes uh, I don't, I don't, especially like the way people uh, uh, evaluate pastors. Okay, uh, I like, I like, for instance, uh, if I was to evaluate any of the speakers, I like Jessica Plants. He's funny. But the thing is here, he's funny for about three quarters of a sermon, and then at the end, yeah. he changes and gives you the final punch. Yeah. And all the laughing you did, all of a sudden you go like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen? Don't evaluate pastors by what they say and what they speak. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know why you shouldn't do it? Because you're judging them. Don't do it. If you were, if you want to receive your health, you want to receive finances, you want your bills paid, you want everything done. This sermon's going to touch it, and, and it's going to touch where you might be missing it. You know what I feel in my heart? The Spirit of God just told me this. There's people even here or out there listening to us. You're getting yourself into a financial rut. And it's going to take years for you to get out of it if you don't listen to the Spirit of God. Exactly. I've been there. I've been there. And some of you people that are doing pretty good, you've been there where you get your money and you blow it on everything else. And then when it comes to God, you don't give him anything but a dollar and five dollars. And that's all you give him for Christmas and Easter and, and, or Resurrection Sunday. That's all you give him. Well, he doesn't have much to work with. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So be times, be givers, and, and listen and listen to what we have to say today. I'm going to entitle my, my sermon for today, Take No Thought. Ooh, yeah. Take No Thought. I kind of mentioned this to my wife. And the Bible, I, I told her, she, she's always asking, what are you going to preach Sunday? What are you going to preach Sunday? I said, I'll just show up. <laughs> and uh, uh, there, there was a time when I, uh, when Sal and I first got married, uh, the first three Sundays I taught on the same thing. So when I get up, I will go, well, let's, let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. And she would sit there very loud, and she goes, again? How, how many healings did Jesus do in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? One? How many people did he heal? Two? He healed thousands. You know why? Because he taught on healing. He taught on healing. He taught on healing. And then he included faith. How to believe it, how to receive it, how to take it. And it's yours in claim it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's principles out, out in, in the Word of God that people are not using to benefit them to be healed and to be, to get the best of what God has for you because you're thinking here. You're thinking here. God didn't create this for you to think on his word. You know why he gave you this? So you can get what the word of God says, speak it out of your mouth and drop it into your heart and then out of the bunch of the heart the mouth speaks. But you're speaking what? You're speaking faith, you're speaking what the Word of God says. If you're not talking God and you're talking more about your problems, 
That's when you're going to be stuck at. If Gene and Jackie and all they do is talk about finances, that's where they're stuck at. If Richard and Linda, all they're talking about is, well, this COVID-19, this cold, this, this, this heart problem, or this whatever uh, I, I have a problem with in health wise, you're stuck right there. If these two people here, all they do is talk about, well, the kids, and they talk about this, and they talk about this, and talk about that, that's where they stay at. Stella comes up to me, she'll ask me questions, what do you think about the kids? I said, what do you want me to say about the kids? All I can say about the kids is this, we pray for them, they have a choice to believe God, they need to go to church, they need to pray, they need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, just go on with the program. And then she tells me this, she goes, it's easier said than done. I says, well, <clears throat> watch this. If the Lord says, take no thought, there's just no excuse for you taking a thought and getting into worrying. Oh, I thought this was a Pentecostal church. <laughs> you guys have been thought, you guys have been taught good. That's why I say this. When we first got married, Stella would come up to me and she said, you got a heart? I said, yeah. You sure you got a heart? Nothing moves you. I go, I'm human, I'm not, I'm not Superman, I'm not super individual, but I've learned one thing. If my Lord says, take no thought, now watch this, watch this. If you take a thought for today, you know what people carry it to the 10th degree? Now they're thinking about what's gonna to happen tomorrow and the Bible says tomorrow will take care of itself. Now watch this. If you're thinking about your health, your finances, or whatever the situation is now, and the Lord said take no thought, you're using the word against you. You're listening to the wrong spirit. God says come over here to this side, take no thought, Believe and receive what I say, and you can sleep better. Amen. How many people here, just in this congregation here? I'm not, I have I haven't even asked the people out there on in uh, <coughs> Facebook. How many are thought warriors? I mean, you have a mastery in it. What good is it going to do to you? Watch this. Nothing. All it's going to do is increase whatever you're thinking about that doesn't line up with the Word of God and it's going against you. I was looking under sleep. And the Bible said that he'll give sleep to his beloved. I'll eventually get to the scripture. He said he'll give you sleep to the beloved. Here's another scripture in Psalms. It says, lie down and put your head on the pillow. That's my loose translation. And go to sleep. And then I read some studies in where it takes people two or three hours before they go to sleep. This is just man. This is just a study. But the reason they have to wait two, three hours before they go to sleep is because they're thinking all day long what the problem is or how they can solve the situation. Now they're thinking about tomorrow. So when they put their head on the pillow, guess what? That's not God. If you have to take a pillow, go to, if you have to take a pill or whatever medication to go to sleep. That's not God. I'm not tearing that down. I'm just telling you, I know where you're missing it. I didn't say Jesus said, he said, take no thought. Yes, he did. But if you're worrying about today, and then, well, let me put it this way. 
A lot of stuff that has been taught about grace, but this is what I've learned by listening to my, uh, uh, listening to Raymond. You have grace sufficient for today. Now watch this. You can't use that grace of today for tomorrow. You have grace for today to be healthy and strong and prosperous. Let the weak say, I'm strong. I am the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. I have the grace to say that, but I can't say it for tomorrow. I need it now. What does he what does Hebrew 11 1 say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now you need you need your faith now. I need to be healed now, not tomorrow. I need the finances now, not tomorrow. In reverse, people go to bed or all day long they go, I don't have enough food. Well, I guess that means I don't have any food tomorrow. You're already thinking about tomorrow. It's not even here yet. And what you're causing, you're causing your immune system to not work for you. That's why your body becomes short circuit. And all of a sudden, if you go to the doctor, I've talked to a lot of people who have been sick. It just, it just seems like it gets bigger or what, whatever the disease is, whatever the symptoms are, whatever, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But the thing is here, the more you talk about your problem, the problem it gets. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, back to my comment that I told Stella for the last 26 years, I'm not moved by what I see, hear, or feel. Not too much moves me. Nothing, I'm not moved by what I see, hear, or feel. Stella said one day she came up to me, she caught me off guard, she said, what are you gonna do if I leave you? <laughs> she wasn't laughing. Well, because. <laughs> now we had some situations that were coming up in our lives or whatever the case may be, but here was my answer. Give me 10 minutes. She goes, what for? So I can go upstairs, get my suitcase, throw my underwear, put my socks, put my couple of shirts, a couple of pants, <clears throat> uh, my shaving kit, my cologne or whatever, and, and uh, <clears throat> I'll put it all in there, and, and then I'll come downstairs and I'll follow you. <laughs> I'm not moved by what I see, hear, or feel. I'm only acting on what God told me. She's my wife. Yes. I'll say it again. I'm only acting, believing, and receiving by faith what the Word of God says about me. I'm not taking a thought from the devil saying, oh, she found another guy. She found Negro. It's a joke. I'm making a point here by the Spirit of God. A lot of this stuff's not in my notes. I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't think about tomorrow. Now back to my study. Well, not my study, but the study on my sleep. You know how long it takes me to go to sleep when I put my head on the pillow? Why can't I do that? You, you, you know, you, you, guys, you guys are good. Steadfast. Now, when I go to bed, I thank my God my bills are paid. I thank God finances came in. Thank God I got food in the fridge. Thank God for the church it's paid for. Thank God for our children. Thank God for the finances that come through this church so we can support six ministries. We support six ministries out of this church. I think it moved up to seven or what. If I'm correct. Seven ministries we support in this church and we never lose 
I've given you. The money is always fair. Why? Because you guys believe in us. You believe that she takes care of the finances. And if you believe that, the Lord believes us. That's why the finances come in and we're able to do this, this, and that. So at the end of the day, I said, thank you, Father God, for our needs being met. I give you praise, glory, and honor. I put my head on the pillow and I go to sleep. I usually wake up at uh, 4 o'clock, 4.30, because I already slept by six, seven hours. But I just toss around bed and get up later. But the devil's always there put those thoughts, those ideas, and suggestions into you. You're the one that has the choice whether to think about it or not to think about it. Go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen? Amen. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Verse 25. Now, in my Bible, it's, it's in red. And when it's in red, that means Jesus is talking. The Son of God. The Savior. The Redeemer. The Healer. The Deliverer. My Butler. Amen? And verse 25, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than clothes. Now, I want to go back to verse 25. It says, therefore, I send to you, take no thought. When I was talking to Stella, she goes, yeah, but. I says, get your butt out of the way. Now, the reason people have problems with take no thought it's because they've been saying about it. They've been saying what they want to be saying. Regardless of what the Word of God says, they've been saying it for years. So when I come and I tell somebody to take no thought, you don't know what I'm going through. <clears throat> you know what my next comment is sometimes? If they let me speak it, I don't know what the heck they're thinking about anything. My Jesus didn't think about at all about going to the cross. He gave himself to go to the cross. So then he took all the sins of the world in the past, present, and future. He took all my sins and put it upon him. His bones were showing. After he got whipped 39 times. Those four or five inches uh, thorns that they put on him as a crown went and came out. And you're telling me you got a situation, you got a problem? I'm not denying you got a problem. If Jesus said, take no thought after he after he died and resurrected, then he conquered it. If he could do it, we can because he's given us the authority in the name of Jesus. So your husband doesn't like you. So your husband doesn't like you. Or your boyfriend doesn't like you. Is that a reason not to come to church? Is that a reason not to go to work? Is that a reason to, to go to bed and go, oh my God, what am I going to do now? I'm going to tell you something right now. You better focus and get your attention to the Word of God. When he says, take no thought, that's easier said than done. But guess what people that really think a lot, criticize people, talk about people, make fun of people, and then they look at themselves, they're more dead than the other ones. Spiritually. Do I like everything my kids are doing up in Denver? No. Do I call them and correct them? No. Do I pray for them? Yes. Do I lift them up to the Lord? Yes. Do I put the blood over them? Yes, we do. And that settles it because I believe it, I receive it, and I do it by faith. That's it. That's the end of it. And then when I go to bed, I put my head on the pillow. Guess what I do? And then Stella wakes me up. She goes, Are you awake? 
I said, no, I am. <laughs> she says, talk to me. I can't go to sleep. Watch this, and I say this with all due respect because I love my wife. That's not my fault he can't go to sleep. That's your fault because what you need to do, you have to do, you have literally have to take what the Word of God says, and He says, take no thought. No fearful thought. When you start worrying, I have it on my notes, you're crossing the line. There's a, there's a fine line. Brother Hagin taught us this. He saw this in the spiritual realm. He's teaching us a rhema. Here's the devil's realm. Here's God's realm. He says, if you're born again, child of living, God's spirit filled, you ought to stay right here. But when you get into worrying, which causes faith to decrease or to be set aside or put away, guess what? The only thing you can do is get on what? Get on the other side and start listening to the devil. You're not going to make it. You're going to die. So, so people tell me, oh, take no thought. You can't do that. It's easy. Get from this realm. It's, it's easy. No, really, it's easy, Gene. Get over here and start reading the Word of God and speak what He says. Now, people say, you don't understand what I'm doing. You don't understand what I'm going through. I don't have to. I don't know why they tell me that. They always tell me that. You know, Frank, you don't understand the word I'm coming from. Frank, you don't understand this, Pastor. You don't understand. I don't have to. Yes, that's right. All right, well, that's right. I don't have to. God knows. The devil knows. He's the one who's putting all those thoughts into you. Yeah. All you're doing is coming in. All you're doing is speaking out his words. That's right. I want to get over here to God's word, and guess what? When I get over here, my bills are paid. I have money in the bank. I got money in my pocket. Guess what? I get over here with the realm of the devil. If someone gave me a thousand dollars, the Bible says the money will go right through my fingers, and it'll go right through a bag that has holes on the bottom. But if I, if I don't want my goods to spoil, guess what I do? It's easy, people. It's not hard. But here's one thing. The Lord spoke to me. He said this to me. Renewing of the mind. Yes. You have to get away from the old way of thinking into God's way of thinking. Yes. Absolutely. Now, some of you doing this, the Spirit God just told me, you went from here to here, and you go, two months later, you go, I haven't received anything from God. <clears throat> I haven't gotten any money. I haven't gotten a job. I haven't gotten anything. And then all of a sudden, the Lord speaks to you and tells you, you've been tithing, you've been working, you've been praying, you've been reading your chapter, you've been reading uh, 1 Corinthians 13. They go, no, no, no. I don't have much to work with. So guess what they do, Kelly? They go from here, and they come over here. The devil will accommodate you. He'll bless you. He'll give you things, and you say, oh, God did it. God's going, no, not me, he did it. A lot of people don't want to believe that, but it's true. If the devil gives you sickness, he can take it away. Because it can't be God. God can't give you sickness. He says, everything I gave and everything I created was good. The devil in John 10, 10 says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is good preaching. This is good preaching. Yeah. Now, now, if I have a sickness on my body, before I speak healing, this is what I used to do. I did this at the hospital when I had my gallbladder taken out. When the nurse over there looked at me, the doctor looked at me, and they go, gallbladder, you need to go to the hospital like this. I chose not to go. I told the doctor and I told my wife, I'm not going. Don't look at me like that. You have to. Jim, I don't know if Jim remembers, but he called you, right? I don't know if Jim, recall, if Jim remembers this. He called 
And he said, uh, how's the pastor doing? He said, well, the doctor said he needs to go to the, to the emergency room and have surgery, and he doesn't want to go. He says, well, doesn't that preacher talk about how if you need a doctor, you use it? So I went to bed, and I had a massive headache like this, because I had, the x-ray showed I had some blood in my brain. And I, and I had two or three big bumps when I hit the wall when I fell off that ladder. <laughs> now, watch, watch, watch this. Was I being smart, or was I being stupid? Stupid. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say stupid. The Bible says you're a fool for not listening to the word of God. So I woke up the next day and I said, I'm going to take Jen's advice. I'm going to go to the doctor. And guess what? Guess what? I'm still here and this is what I said. This is what I do. When I got hit here and I had my gallbladder attack, I said this the first thing, the first thing I did before I received my healing, or asked for my healing, I said, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Yes. Amen. Yes. I have to make it right with my maker. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. If things are not working right in my house, I tell Stella, I said, Stella, is there something you're doing or I'm doing? that we're getting attacked here. What's going on? She'll tell me, but I'll tell her, and then we pray and we ask God to forgive us, and guess what? As soon as I do that, then we're covered by the blood of the Lamb. I have angels to protect me. The Word of God protects, the Word of God heals you. The Word of God supplies all your needs. The Word of God takes that thought away and puts His ways and His thoughts into you. We just believe, receive, and that by faith is yours. We have, we have, we have, we can't run this church having, having, uh, we can't have any strife in our house. Even though company that comes over our house sometimes wants, oh, wants to put a, a wedge in between us. It doesn't work. I know Rick will try it. <laughs> So my wife calls me up and I hug her up and I go, you can't do anything, Rick. Jason, you can't do anything. Joel, you can't do anything. Jeff, you can't do anything. Frankie, I see Michelle, you can't do anything to break our love. You know what? If I stand on this side, then I'm not taking my thought of what they're saying because I cast it out and give it to the Lord and I take God's thoughts, His ways, and it works. I'm healed. People have asked me if, if, if they have the, the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh -huh. would I take it? No. I don't know how many times I've been asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, I already took my vaccine. Amen. 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 I took my flu shot. Yeah. I took my Hong Kong flu shot. Uh -huh. I took my blue, uh, bird, bird, blue bird. flu shot. I, I, I've taken my swine flu. I, I, I've taken, I don't know, how, come, how, how many shots? It's called Galatians 3.13. I've been redeemed Amen. from the curse of the law. Amen. Amen. I go up to the Lord and say, Lord, give me three or four shots right there. Pour that blood over my body. And I remind him what, he, what he's done for me. Some say it's impossible not to worry. Amen? Now watch this. Listen to this. Some believe it's impossible not to worry. Even Christians. They think that if they don't worry, they don't care. They don't care. That's a life from the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. Don't worry, don't care. Uh -uh. Amen. I'm, I'm doing this because uh, I love my kids. I'm doing this because I, I love this. No, it's not. You're just talking out of your head. You're being foolish. The Bible says, take no thought. Amen? Amen. Yes. Now watch this if you're taking notes. This is a good comment. The Lord doesn't understand that you are going to worry about something. He doesn't understand why you're worrying. He doesn't understand why you're worrying about a certain thing. When he says take no thought. 
Some of you are thinking too hard. Some of you are went over your head like that. My Jesus is not going to stand next to you saying that he's going to be concerned about you worrying about so and so and so and so. He's going to tell you what? My word says what? Who's your protector? Who's your guide? Who's the banner that flows, the flag that flies over your head? It's my Lord Jesus Christ. You think I'm worrying about the government? I'm not. I'll be as bold as I can as a pastor. I don't care about the Democratic Party. I don't care about the Republican Party, conservative, liberal, Tea Party. I don't care. My God says that if, if my people, which are called by my name, yes. shall humble themselves yes. and pray, yes. ask me to forgive them, yes. I'll heal and return from their wicked ways, I'll heal their land. Yes. Whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, yes. whether you're for uh, uh, Mr. Joe Biden, or you're for President Trump. All I can tell you is this. I take no thought on that. No. But I'm listening to the prophets. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. The devil cannot come against our church. He can't prevail against the church. The gates of hell cannot come against the church. If we don't let him, if we take no thought, oh, I wonder what Nancy Pelosi is going to say. No matter what she has to say. Uh, 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 president, uh, or the elect president, or whatever, Joe Biden. He has all his cabinet. He has all this going on. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to do that. Me? I think he has a surprise coming. That's right. Amen. I think he has a surprise coming. Amen. You know why? Because Christians are coming together yes. and not taking that thought. Ooh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I can't go to McDonald's. I'm afraid. I, I, I can't go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm afraid. The virus might be in the chicken because somebody had to pick it up. This is what you do when you get the fried chicken. What do we do? I thank you, Father God, and even you, you eat with us at Kentucky Fried Chicken. I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think the blood of the Lamb. I thank God any disease, anything, anybody spitting this or whatever the case may be. I'm healed in Jesus' name. It has Amen. no effect on me. Amen. You know what? I've got to take no thought about the flu. Amen. I've got to take, I've got to take no thought about the virus. I'm taking no thought about the economy. And when people come over our house, they want to argue with me. I see it. I see it coming up. I see it. Well, you know, I'm going to get all messed up. I see that. I just leave. I wouldn't turn the TV set on and watch a football game that was played four years ago. Amen. I'm not moved to what I see or hear or hear, Mr. Mr. Fruits. It don't bother me again. Now, if I stick with God, if I stick with my Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> Psalm seventy-eight forty-one. Quick, read. I'm just going to read it, but you can look it up. Psalm seventy-eight forty-one says this: Yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited, limited. The Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78, 41. Yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. What he's really talking about is the children of Israel. Man, they were bragging and complaining. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. You know why your marriage may not work out, your relationship may not work out, your job may not work out, the finances may not work out. You don't want to come to church. You want to stay home and be lazy and put the pajamas on and eat the noodle or whatever and watch us instead of being here. That's your fault. That's, right. your choice. That's your choice. Right now, the devil, if you could understand the rulers of this world, the world of darkness, the rulers of this darkness, how, how it's already, at first, it paralyzed the United States. Even Christians didn't know what to do until Kenneth Copeland's Victory Channel came up and said what? We're the head, not the tail, above and not the knees. We're blessed going in, blessed going out, regardless of what, they, what, what all this is coming. Whatever's around me. 
My wife says, oh, I'm humbug. I'm going to stay home. I said, well, stay home. I'm going to call Rick, and I'll pay, you, I'll pay you $100. Rick and Gene will go with me to Kentucky Fried Chicken. You want to stay home? Stay home. And now I get ready. She goes, you going to leave me? I said, get ready. Oh, bring your purse and bring a lot of money. Now watch this. I don't do things foolishly. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I know what the Word of God says. Yes. Amen? Amen. Right. Here's another little comment I want to make. You can be around faith people. You can be around Pentecostal people. You can be around tongue talker people. And still worry. Yes. Amen, right? Yeah. Well, thank God for those two amens. <laughs> some people thought, to, some people believe this. They believe thoughts are not real. They just made it up themselves. No, you're not that smart to think about it. The devil sits on your shoulder. Brother Hagin saw it, saw it like a little monkey, a little ant, yeah. sitting on this guy's shoulder, whispering. And then all of a sudden there was a black, he saw it in the spiritual realm, discerning the spirits, he saw the black dot right here. And then they saw it, saw how it dropped to the heart, and then they spoke out. And it was God's words. Amen? Praise God. Let's go to verse 26 of Matthew 6. Behold, the birds of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, but let your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not much better than they? The birds, <coughs> do the birds go, uh, go like this on the window with their feet? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Uh, do they stand over there by the telephone wire, the electric light, the wire, and go, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You know, but the Bible says the verse don't, don't take a thought about that. My God takes care of me. No, though. In, in verse 26, the Lord is saying, aren't you a lot better than we in the image of God. Amen. Amen. The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us. And then you, you take thought? It's your choice. But don't come crying to me. Don't come crying to me. Don't call Stella up and tell her all about your real problems. It's time for the church to do what? You've got enough here. If there's over 200 people watching us today, you too, you have enough right now. Just, just like the stuff right now, you have enough to get started. I'm not going to let somebody spoil my rodeo. <laughs> no one's going to rain on my parade. Is that, is that a better way of saying it? I love for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Go to Mark the sixth chapter, I believe, and I'll be closing with this. Mark the sixth chapter. I think it's Mark the sixth chapter. No, Mark the book. Mark the fifth chapter, my fault. You ready for some? Everything I said right now, that, that, that was all that was all an introduction. Let's get, let's get into the word of God. Let's get into the meat of the word of God. Remember everything I said. And in verse 21, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. Verse 22, and behold, there comes one of the rulers of the synagogue. Jairus yeah. by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. Jairus is not Jewish. Okay? He 
wasn't a believer, but he, he must have heard because Romans 10 says, Romans 10 7, Jesus says that faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he heard a lot of miracles. And he came to Jesus, fell on his feet. How'd you like to have a centurion? How'd you like to have a commander uh, run under Caesar, run under King Herod, or whatever the case may be? And, and the Roman soldier falls right at your feet and says, and starts worshiping him. Then there must be truth to what I'm saying. Take no thought. Because if anyone saw him, a Roman soldier, anyone saw him kneeling down at Jesus' feet, that guy's head would have been off the next day. What, what did he say? He went up to Jesus and worshiped Jesus. He took no thought what it might go against him. Look at the next verse. And we saw, verse 23, we saw him greatly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. This is not typical. Does that work for today? Yes. If you believe in God for healing, you believe in God for finances, you believe in God for better sleep, you believe in God for this, this, and this, and that, that this can go a hundred miles, what do you do? How do you get to a point that you're not moved by what you see, hear, or feel? But you have to believe it, receive it, and act on it, then you can testify of it because it happened to you. Can you put your head on the pillow and go to sleep and, and sleep six hours straight? Yes, you can. I'm not the only one that can go to sleep under the top of a hat, am I? I can go to sleep. You know why? Because all of my trust is in Him. I don't put my trust in my wife. And she doesn't put her trust in me. Spiritually, we come together, and if two agree, there's more power in that. Hmm, but you know, husband and a wife, man, my God, you can believe for anything the Lord tells you. Whatever we can believe God for. Amen? Amen? Single people? Single people? Likewise. You can do the same thing too. You don't have to be married. You and the Lord is two. The Spirit of God is three. And then the Son agrees with you, that's three. And you, that's four. Well, what do you want? Sometimes it, people just don't think. They talk too much. I looked under some scriptures about people who talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot. Sometimes I get a phone call from one of the kids and they talk, 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 talk. I put the phone down. I got to go to the bathroom. I lay the. I put my cell phone down. I go to the bathroom, come back. They're still talking. And then my wife says this. What did they say? Not much. I got scriptures to back it up. He would talk so much as a fool. That's what the Word of God says. I can back it up with Scripture. I got, in fact, I got it in here. I'm going to tell you something right now. This came into my spirit. Don't, don't, I, I don't like anybody trying to hustle me with their words or their situation. I'm going to tell you something right now. It won't work. If you come up to me and give me a sad story, sad story, sad story, sad story, sad story, and you're crying and tears are coming down, I'll just look at you and give you tissue, blow your nose, or whatever the score the program the Broncos are playing. How in the heck is this? How is God going to take over this nation? He can't do it without the church. Because he's the head of the church. We're his body. These people that believe in homosexuals, believe in abortion, their day's coming. That's right, that's right. One of the prophets wrote, took his yes. suit coat off, rolled up his sleeve, and he says, God's rolling up his sleeves. Yes. He's ready to go to work. Yes. Yes. And we're out right here. <laughs> I can't go to talk a real. <laughs> COVID-19 might be there. Somebody might say, oh my God, grow Oh. Amen, amen. Amen. I have a good, oh. I 
used to think as a child. Now that I'm grown up, I don't talk like a child anymore. I put that away. You know that scripture? You know what that means? That, that, that little boy right here. Okay. How old is he? Okay. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. This is true because I raise kids. They have no discipline. You tell them to touch the fire, you turn around. Yeah. Oh! And at the moment, they'll do anything at the moment. I've seen kids cry at a Walmart and throw the toy at the mother, hit her in the face, and cut her. Oh, wow. Blood came down. We're looking at her, and I'm going, oh my God, that little boy. I went like this. <laughs> I'm not lying to you, Stella. I went like this. I felt like picking him up. Taking my belt over there. <laughs> Taking his pampers off or his shorts, boxer shorts or whatever, and just spanking that little boy across his butt, making him cry, and then look at it and saying, you know what? You better listen to what your mama says. But mama and dad don't have the guts to do that. They let him do whatever they want to do. Now watch this. But as a man, I've grown up, I should be developing and taking no thought. I should develop in self-discipline. I should develop and concentrate on the Word of God. But a 60-year-old guy can act like a three-year-old. Yeah, I heard a man that's over 50 years old say this, what's in it for me? I looked and looked at this fellow and I'm going, what the heck? I would walk into a restaurant and go, I'm here. It's, you know, like you're Fonzie. You come in there into that. Well, what's the name of that place? Um, Al's Diner. Al's Diner. Al's. Arnold's or Arnold's. 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 My bad. Arnold's. Hey, yeah. You know what Fonzie did? If you know it, some of you young people look at him. <laughs> this guy was a good looking man. You know, he was, he was rebellious. And he'd go over to the jukebox and just slam it. And the music will start. Yeah. And then he go. Hey. And two girls will show up. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. And guess what? And guess what the young people did? Are you gonna follow what some guy says or are you gonna follow what God says? You follow the man, you're gonna be thinking. And you're gonna be taking thoughts. How come I shut my finger and no two girls come up? Amen? He's got a good God. Go back to... No. Uh, we're still in Mark, the sixth chapter. I'm ready to finish up. Let's go to verse... What happened? What, what, what happened? In verse 24, Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and they just kind of suffocated Jesus there. There were so many people. Verse 25, and a certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years came up to him. Jairus came in, got on his knees, no thought about whatever, what the Roman government's going to say, what everybody else is going to say, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and whatever religious people. He didn't care about it. He got before God and he says, I got a 12 year old daughter who's dying. I need you to lay hands on her. And Jesus is walking. He's walking with a guy, and then a woman. That had an issue of blood 12 years, touched the hem of his garment. Yes. Jesus turns around and says, Who touched me? Yes. And the woman goes, I did. You know what I'm thinking? If I was Jairus, what would you think if you're Jairus? <clears throat> and you see this commotion that if the Bible doesn't say how long it lasted, it could have lasted a good half hour. Yeah. Now, Jairus, Jairus was saying this I'm taking no part. I think, I think what Jesus is doing, I went over there, I laid down, I, I, I lay flat, I prayed, I worshiped the Lord, my daughter needs healing, I want you to lay hands, and then as they're walking, a woman comes over, they touch the hem of Jesus' garment, gets healed, and they start a conversation. Just because you pray, doesn't mean you get your answer like that. I mean, see it manifested. Some of you are you believe in this in this church right now, if you believe in God for healing, 
but you can't give up because you don't see anything different. You don't know what's got. You don't know what's happening in the spiritual realm. You don't know what's happening inside your body. You don't. I don't care what you are. I've had guys come over to my house and say this, 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 that. They're talking like they're doctors. You don't know nothing about your body. My, my Jesus created you. Okay, now watch this. And, and then finally, in verse 34, he says, uh, and he said unto her daughter, thy face has made thee whole, go in peace, and be whole of the plague. So it could have it lasted, say, 20 or 30 minutes, Richard, right? It could have lasted 45 minutes. Because the woman told Jesus everything that happened to her, how she got into that position, how she got into that. It could have been an hour. And Jairus is doing what? My daughter is dying. But guess what? He didn't leave. Some of you leave God. I'm believing for finance. Thank you, Lord. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. And then 10 minutes later, Lord, I thank you. 20 minutes later, three hours later, thank you, Lord. And, and then you go to bed and you go, well, yeah, well there's nothing to happen. You left his word. You left his word. Jairus didn't leave God. He stuck there. Okay, look at verse 35. While he spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, sir, uh, 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 Jairus' house, thy daughter is dead. Why trouble the master any further? Has Jairus been standing there for at least 45 minutes, half an hour? Yeah, at least. I, I think you guys can agree with me. Okay. Now somebody comes from his house and says, your daughter's dead. Now watch it. This is what the Lord showed me yesterday. He did say a word. Look it up. Did he say anything? Did Jairus say anything? Look at your Bible. Did you, come on, I'm asking you a question. Do you see? Did John ever say anything? No. When that servant came in and said, don't, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter's dead, man. He's cold as eyes. Boom, no heartbeat, nothing. What did John ever say? Nothing. What would you have said? Oh, <laughs> crying. I know, I know about three or four girls. They cry at Asian. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. That crying isn't going to move God. That crying isn't going to move faith. No, no, it's not. It's not. Whether you believe it or not, it's, it's gospel truth. Only faith moves God. His word moves God. You believe it, receive it, act on it, and tell that mountain to be thou removed. It's going to work in your life. Jarvis didn't have any teaching like that. Look at 36. As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. Why did Jesus say that? Come on, come on, tell me. Why did Jesus say that? I'm, 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 I'm almost finishing up. Why did Jesus say that? He wanted to take that off. You finally got it. What's the title of the message? Some of you are saying it. That went over my head. He didn't. he didn't take the fault. But Jesus said, Be not afraid, only believe. In the Amplified Bible, it says, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. He might have seen the face of Jairus. That's all I'm thinking about. Well, well I mean, if you're out there jumping down, you know, because the woman with issue, you're 12 years old, all of a sudden healed, and then all of a sudden you jump and you turn around, and there's somebody from your house saying your dog's dead. Do you think you still have the joy of the Lord? Do you think, do you, think you still feel like jumping? 
You got to remember, these guys were not born again. Jesus was still alive. They didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. So they're going to add more to the flesh, sometimes more than, than what the Word of God says. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to protect the guy. Jesus must have, might have seen something on his face. And he says, don't do it. Look at verse 37. And he suffered no man to follow him. Only Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house in verse 38, what's going on in verse 38? Come and talk to me. What's, what's happening? The who's there? Would you believe at that time, at that time, when, when someone died, they would hire grievers to come in and actually cry for the family. That's not God, that's the devil. Amen? So fear, now watch this, write this down in your notes too. Fear and doubt, but no, fear and faith cannot work together. Fear and faith cannot work together. You're either going to go to fear, which is of the devil, or you're going to go on faith and hook up with God. Amen? So he went over there. Did he answer? Did, did Jesus ask him a question? Yes, he did. Did he answer? On this account, in Luke 8, he doesn't say anything about it. I looked it up already. But Jesus already got his answer because he will be there unless he had faith. Because it took faith to get down and worship the, the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand that? I hope you get that. Do your own study. Verse 39. And when he had come in, he said unto them, Why in the heck are you crying? Why is all this going on? The damsel is not dead, but sleeping. This is what the Spirit of God taught me yesterday. Everything that is in red is hearing from the Spirit of God. Remember Jesus said, I can only do and say what I hear the Father say and do? He's not doing this. As a son of God, he's doing it as a son of man, but listening to the Spirit of God like we need to do in the New Testament. You got it? They'll save you a lot of headaches once you get a hold of it. Verse 40, and they left him to scorn, and then he put them all out of the house. I can see Jesus doing this, I really can, because he flipped the tables over, right? I think he went over there and he says, you, 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 you get paid forty dollars an hour, get the heck out of here. You and you and you, out of here. He got rid of fear. And then, and then he walked in the room and he says, girl, rise up. And guess what she did? You don't hear too much about Jairus, do you? Oh, this came, this thought came to me. It's in my notes. I forgot about it. When Jesus is being not afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. You don't hear much about Jairus saying anything. You know what I think he said? Let's go. What I had to say today, I got about four or five pages of notes. All I give, all I gave today was just an introduction. Take no thought about what's going on with people. Come on. Take no thought about the economy. There's curses right now. This is what I feel in my heart, because I already told Sal about this. This is what I feel in my heart. Some of the people, Christians, are taking this COVID-19. They're taking it. <clears throat> they're crossing the line with it. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it's not out there. I'm not saying people are dying. I'm not saying that. It's real. It's real. You're sickness on your body. It's real. 
I don't see none of that. But there's a healer of what yes. you say and what you yes. do in your lifestyle determines whether God will heal you or not. Yes. There's still spiritual, there's still, there's still uh, uh, spiritual uh, principles that you need to follow. Yes. I remember my mother when uh, we were raised Catholic and uh, <clears throat> my mother got sick and they took her to the doctor and they x-rayed her and they found a black spot in her lung. And that's all we knew. That's all, that's all the information she gave us. She went to church. You know how you put $2, $1, $5, $100 and you can light all the candles? Those candles ain't going to heal you. That's right, right. Amen. Amen. So you go over there with the holy water set and you go like that and you pour it down your head? It's the Word of God. Amen. You got to get a hold of the Word of God and apply it on your life and say, I'm healed. I believe it and I receive it in Jesus' name. Richard Hedda. Four by. Healed. Jim had a head, hepatitis C. Doesn't have one problem. Your son. My son, he's been great. He never came. <coughs> he's been great. He's been great. Alan B has cancer. Alan B had cancer. Doesn't have it. Tell us to say no to him. Also has cancer. Uh, Eunice. Yeah. Yeah. Eunice. Eunice had a, a tumor the size of a newborn. Yeah. Uh -huh. Understand what the word of God. Now, I will say this. If I pray over somebody and we pray as a church over somebody and they're born to be Christians and they die, Amen. Win, guess what? Win-win win, win situation, win, yeah. you still go to heaven. Yeah. 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 And you're well. Yeah. 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 Herod arrested Peter and put him in the dungeon and he chained him King Herod chained Peter to a Roman soldier here and a Roman soldier over here he said this is my loose translation but he said King Herod told Peter tomorrow Have a good sleep. Did he toss the shirt off? Oh, yeah. No. Come on. He was so sound asleep. An angel came in. And the angel had to kick Peter to wake him up. He was sound deep sleep. Now, he's the one. Who wrote, cast all your fears. Cast all your cares. And the Lord. But I believe Peter said this before he went to bed. Regardless of what happens tomorrow, I believe this. You're my Lord and you're my protector. Lord, I'm not going to worry, worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to believe this. You're going to take care of me. And the angel came in into that prison. The chains fell off. Doors were open. All the prison doors opened up. There was like a little earthquake. Herod's asleep and thinking about, I wonder how I should cut his head off. Has to go through his spinal cord. Has chop, I really have to talk to that guy sharpened that axe really good. Peter was doing what? Take no thought. Can you do it? Yes.
Some of you look at me kind of funny. Yeah, but we're not you. You'll never be like me. No. You can't imitate me. No. Yeah. If you try to imitate me, forget it. You're blowing it. God created you. Gene and I don't have the same fingerprints. No. Yeah. Oh. We don't have the same fingerprints. We don't. I leave you with this. I thank God for the Spirit of God to show me things while I'm studying. I heard this preacher say this. You know, my style says this I'm God's favorite. You can only believe that for. Now, watch this. Watch this. You can only believe that for yourself. You know why I stand on that? Because John said, what did John, what did John say? To I'm the disciple that, God, that Jesus loves. Mm -hmm. Jesus loved every one of them. He loves 7.3 billion people in, yeah. in the world. Yeah. You can say that and believe that for yourself, but you can't believe it for anyone else. For me, that's important. I do too. But he says, I'm Jesus. But we're his beloved. Yes. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. Well, we're done for today. Tomorrow, I mean, next Sunday is our Christmas service. Come and join us. We're going to start at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Amen. Amen.